Hi, I'm Dan Bowen and my internship with the Thames Valley Environmental Record Centre was mapping the distribution of black and brown hair street butterflies. Just as an introduction then to my internship, we are seeing within the UK and worldwide rapid biodiversity decline, which means we need methods to conserve the species we are losing. In order for these conservation strategies to be used effectively, we first need to understand the distribution and the requirements of the species we're trying to save. The focus of this study were the black and brown hair street butterflies. These two species are quite specialist butterflies because they only use blackthorn stands as food plants for their caterpillars. The adults live in colonies and populate tree canopies, scrubland areas and hedges, and they rarely move great distances, so they're not very good dispersers. The purpose of this study was to map where the species are most densely populated and identify areas for possible conservation development. The methods that I used were analysis through QGIS. So the first step was to overlay phase one habitat classification with local wildlife sites that TVRC had already identified as having some form of conservation interest. From this overlay map, I was able to then plot the points of the butterflies and the blackthorn and create heat maps for their distributions. I created a generalized heat map, which showed the general concentrations of the points and two others that had a 10 meter and 15 meter radius for the points, which represented the approximate size for the blackthorn thickets. Using this data, I performed near neighbor analysis, which identified the blackthorn hub for each of the butterfly colony points. I also performed points per polygon analysis, and this helped me to investigate if habitat suitability affected the butterfly distribution. So on screen are the results for the black hair streak butterfly. So as you can see, there's a quite high concentration in the northeast of Oxfordshire, and I identify this area as being white cross green and oriole woods. So there's a really strong localization in the northeast of the subject area with a hotspot at White Cross and Oriel Woods. And these sites are a site of special scientific interest. This indicates that actually a well-established population is within a protected area of woodland. And that's a key message that we will be seeing again later on in the presentation. On screen now are the heat map for the brown hair street butterfly. So as you can see, again, there's a localization in the northeast of Oxfordshire and also extending into the Murcott Meadows and Asham Meads. So the, again, same general area, but a greater spread reaching further into the surrounding area for the brown compared to the black. Still a stronghold of the population at White Cross and Oriel Woods, but also extending to Ash and Meads Reserve, indicating that there's a small pocket of su suitable habitat supporting a, a stronghold population within there too. And here are the heat maps for the blackthorn stands. Now, interestingly, there's a localization of the blackthorn in the northwest of the area, especially at Wykewood and lower and and the lower and north envelope valleys. So there's a concentration this time in the northwest and extending to be above the background in the Middle East and the southeast too. The localization of Blackthorn in the north and lower envelope valleys and Wykewood conservation sites again supports the fact that a high frequency of Blackthorn occurs within protected conservation areas. When these maps were overlaid, you can see that there's actually quite a poor correlation between where the butterflies are localized and where the blackthorn is localized. The overlay shows that stronghold butterflies do not necessarily correlate with the strongest localization of the blackthorn. The analysis of the butterfly concentrations show that only a slight abundance of blackthorn are required to support a great abundance of the hair streaks. When I performed the nearest neighbor analysis, the purpose was to investigate the necessity of hair street colonies to be in direct contact with their blackthorn food plant. The way that this analysis tool works is it draws a straight line from the population point to the nearest hub of blackthorn. The average distance to the blackthorn is 91 meters away, 
for the black hair streak and 90 meters for the brown hair streak, which is not what you expect if you consider that hair streaks are localized to the blackthorn that was previously assumed. So it may be that blackthorn stands are reserved for breeding only before dispersal of the adults into the surrounding habitats. And the other analysis tool that I performed on the data were counts per polygon. So both species fortunately occupied tree canopies of woodland areas, hedgerows and dense scrubland. These suitable areas were marked as yellow on the map and all others were considered as being unsuitable habitats and marked as pink. The Campy Polygon analysis showed that more than half of the points for both hair streak and blackthorn occurred in areas considered not suitable habitat for the butterflies. And I've got the pie charts to show these results. So 57% of the black hair streak sightings were in habitats that wouldn't, wouldn't be considered suitable for that butterfly. And again, with the brown, 78% in non-suitable habitats. And for the blackthorn, 62% of the plants were in not suitable habitats for the butterflies. So it was clear that blackthorn proximity and habitat suitability were not necessarily very good ways of indicating whether or not there would be a stronghold of the hair streaks. So I decided to consider the presence of existing local wildlife sites. Now, these are existing sites that are already recognized by TBERC for their wildlife. So they're either a target conservation area, a nature reserve, an SSSI, and so on. So when I perform the point of polygon analysis on the data, it is very clear that the LWS sites are vitally important. 91% of the black hair streaks 81% of the brown hair streaks and 94% of the black thorn points were in existing sites of conservation interest. And just to show the significance of these results, I have the pie charts here. So 91% of the black hair streak butterfly counts are in existing sites. Set so 81% for the brown hair streak and 94% for the black thorn plants are already in existing conservation sites. So just to discuss the results, it's clear that we actually have a lot to learn about hair streak ecology to inform conservation. Habitat suitability and proximity to blackthorn food plants seem to not actually be very accurate in predicting populations of hair streak butterflies. In fact, having an existing site with some conservation protection is more influential in supporting larger populations, as is shown by white grass and oriole woods. Now, QGIS does have some analysis faults, but even so, the values, while they shouldn't be seen as completely concrete, should be used as guidance for more detailed investigation. However, the main issue with this investigation was the sampling bias that was clearly present. There would be more people in the more populated areas, so there would be more people going out and finding these butterflies, which may be why there is such a strong localization of the butterflies in the northeast of the subject area. So to conclude, it's very important that we consider existing conservation sites when informing our conservation practices. Linking these sites will be crucial in the conservation of these species, as it seems these butterflies are not big dispersers. So having suitable habitat links between the areas that already have conservation status and having a reliance on these existing protecting sites will show to be more important than having a newly developed suitable habitat and performing an introduction that will actually likely be unsuccessful. A more in-depth analysis and discussion of the results of this study are in my full report, and you can contact me via my email for a PDF of this report. So just as a small bibliography of the two resources that I found to learn more about the hair streak butterflies. And I also just wanted to thank TVERC for providing the internship placement to perform the investigation and to everyone who collected and distributed the records of the Hair Street Butterflies. So yeah, thank you very much for listening to my presentation.